Hello, everybody. Good evening to you all. We can let me please drop one 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 on the chat so that we can get started immediately. One 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 on the chat so that we can get started immediately. Okay, so. This is Boom 1000. Yesterday we talked about Boom 500, and now today we are moving to Boom 1000. Gradually, gradually we are getting to the end of the back testing session for all the assets we have on the reef. So for today we are taking a look at Boom 1000, and um. All we can see here, this guy has been bullish. Why do I know that it has been bullish? This is a high. Later, they broke out of this last structural point, which happens here. Broke out of here, and then came back to the test, probably to fill this large candle able to feel the imbalance, broke out of this zone also. Price broke out of here, created a high, and then price came back to the test. Price didn't, price didn't break this zone. Price didn't break this last structural point. So we can see that there's a big probability that price will rally up out of here to break out of this last structural point which happens to be here. So whatever happens here determines if this guy will now come back to retail and then we continue the bullish movement. So now if I want to take any um, trade on B1000 based on what we are seeing right here I think it's advisable but Buy setups instead of sell. Buy setups. I know we have been looking for a way to sell it. But looking at what has been happening here, looking at what has been happening here, what if price created a kind of high, a low here, high, low, and then I back to close above this zone. So looking at the H1, you will be looking to sell. <coughs> you will be looking to sell. But taking a look at what the daily or the weekly. Sorry, let this guy note. And let's hold it down. So looking at what daily the monthly is giving us, we can see that price is giving us a kind of a bullish <coughs> price formation. So my advice is gonna be that we should start looking out for buys instead of sell on B1000. So let's go to the beginnings, guys. Okay, so we are here, guys. So what happened here? This is a low. This is a high. This is a low. High, low. Break of structure happened here. Break of structure happened here. Price came back to this breakout block. Broke structure again. And then price didn't give uh, 
a significant retest. Rising giving a significant retest back into here. So I'm seeing a kind of imbalance here. Price came back to fill. Then and then we saw price diving deeper. So price broke structure here again. Price broke structure here. And of course, after the break of structure to the downside, remember this is the daily time frame. So you got to be very, very attentive to every move that price is doing. So do and then high break of structure, price came back to retest this zone, the last structural point, the last high. Couldn't take out the high and then broke structure to the downside. Uh, this doesn't look like a significant retest, so let's use. Let's use this. <clears throat> Let's use this. So, so I low, I low, low, I low. So, what happened there? I low, high, low. You can use this as a structural point, but of course, you can see that it switched out of here. Had a kind of um, institutional move that came to fill the imbalance. So for me, I may would like to take this as my low, <coughs> and then this as a new high, and then this becomes a new low. So price push structure here again. But what happened here? This place being my new high. Price came low, broke out of that high, created a low, gave it a clearer eye out of this zone, came back to retest, and the retest happened around this cube area. So let me drop my fifth to see what happened exactly around that. The price came to Tap the 50 percent of the deep level, which coincides with where we have a uh, uh, oh there we have a uh, a cube, and then you can see that price gave another break of structure to the hop size. So the last up, the last upper structural point became violated. And then what happened? We saw a break of structure to the upside. Price came back to retest. Retest was a breaker block. Price came back to retest the breaker block. So another break of structure to the hub side, and then um, so this place becomes a new valid structural point that was violated again. And then so I low break of structure. This becomes our last structural point to the blue side. Then what happened? Price who took out this guy here, and then broke structure to the downside. Broke structure to the downside. So looking at this move, we're gonna be expecting that price will come to either this zone or this zone or even this zone and then continue to sell. Or price did this thing and then what happened? What happened? 
price broke structure to the downside gave us a bullish price action high low high sorry low high low high low high low break of structure so this happens to be our last the price broke out from showing us that there is an evidence of the buy and if you've been following what the weekly or monthly is saying you're gonna know the price came here all the bearish move that we've been catching happens to be in a swing to create a low and then the bullish move that we caught now happens to be a swing to create a high and then another low and then this bullish momentum that we saw created a new lower high so let's go back to our day um price action there so price broke out of this last structural point here came back to retest feel this imbalance price tab 50 percent of the imbalance let me see the feed levels okay price did give price didn't come back to 50 percent so if a smart trader you wouldn't have taken this trade you wouldn't have taken this trade because this imbalance is resting if price came to fill the imbalance it would have been a potential trade for us because the feel of this imbalance happens to be a tap on the 50 percent level which would have been, of course, a viable trade for you to do. Any trade below here, from this zone to this zone, is valid for you to do as a buy. But price didn't come back to this zone. Price didn't even feel the imbalance totally. Price just came to feel 50% of the imbalance, and then we saw the price rallied up in a new high. So someone will be asking me, is this a new high? Oh, yes it's a new high why do i know that it's a new high price closed above here this happens to be the close of this swing and this happens to be the close of this swing the price closed above here you can see the difference the gradient from here to here is a gradient. It's not a straight line like this the gradient so we can emphatically say that price came to create another high Gave a retest down and then created another high here. So what happened? Let me zoom in so that we can see the price action there very well. So during my FIBS, by reason of the break of structure that I saw here, during my FIBS, price came, you can see price came down to the 50%. Fire price almost touched its 1%. And there was a break of structure to the upside again, making this zone our last structural point which price broke out from by reason of the breaking out of this price this becomes my new range and then i take my price down here down here guys the price came down this price this guy didn't feel the thing which down but didn't touch the 50 percent of the so if you are a smart trader you would have missed out of this you would have missed out of this but you will be here have missed this you would have missed this but you would have been able to catch this but then price broke structure to the upside again creating a new high for us creating a new high for us and then this becomes the new range of the swing This becomes the near reach of the string, and then price came down to 50%, almost touched the 60%. Let's scale down to see probably why price came in. Price turned back from there. Okay, so there is a cube. In fact, so many demands lying down here. So it's by every place for price to turn down. I, I, no, I, no, I. Came back to this demand and uh, upside. 
So this happens to be the high low break of structure, came back to retest 61 point. It didn't touch the 61 point in both us. We can see from here what price came to do. So price created a new high, came to retest and broke out of here to this. This becomes our new high. Yes, you can take this to you can take this to as a new high. This looks more or less like a railway track, and this looks more or less like a single pin um, formation. This is a valid structural point. If you watched my videos, and this the formations around structural points. This looks like the three pins, and this looks like a single pin. So it's, it's, it can be. Uh, as a structural and scaling down to my age for you, see that it's going to be very clear. I know break of structure on the offside, go back to retest and break of structure on the offside, and then price break of structure. So let's be consistent with the data. I'm just trying to let you guys know that in this whole string that happened here, we have several highs and lows in this swing. You've got to be careful so that you will not confuse yourself or be confused. So what happened here? This up actually happens to be our last low on this uh, on this time frame. Price gave us a rally to the upside, and there was a break of structure to the downside. So price broke structure. Yeah. Price broke structure here. Yeah. Created a new loop, gave a kind of a freakish reset, broke structure again. Because there was a break of structure yeah, again. Broke structure again to the downside, broke structure to the upside, and then price ranged for a while. Price did what? Ranged for a while. If you are here, your hand, you'll just be, you know, just observing what the price is doing. Because let's imagine you want to even catch the, the cell. Let's say price give a high, low, high, break of structure. You'll be expecting that this guy should come back here. But there was a break, week out of this zone. So there was a break of structure to the upside. There was a break of structure to the downside. And that break of structure to the upside, price came to create equal low. Did a kind of a retest, broke structure to the downside, took out this liquidity. I think I'm too fast. Are you guys following me? Am I carrying you guys? Out? We are following you, sir. Yes, sir. We are. We are. We are with you, sir. Okay. So price broke structure to the downside, sir. Yes, with you. Okay. The price broke structure to the downside, broke structure to the upside, created equal lows, gave a kind of a funny retest to this king order block. And then there was a sweep of these guys. So price was doing what I would call rubbish or nonsense move here, as you can see. So let's see what happened here. Price with out this dynamic liquidity. This guy with out this dynamic liquidity created a kind of a doji. And then I low break of structure. Price came back. Broke structure. Let me see. Is this a break of structure? Okay, this looks like equal lows, equal highs, I mean. Price created equal high, came back to retest and the full break of structure happened here. So by reason of the break of structure that happened here, this becomes your last structural point. In the lower range and last structural point in the upper range. So what happened? Price gave a retest, 
gave a rally. Price rally rallied up, didn't break structure. Price rally doubled, didn't break this structure. That should give you an evidence that price is likely to take out this last low that was created. Why? Looking at this, this high low, high break of structure came back to retest, came back to break out this high. So the purpose of the whole price action that happened here happened just to uh Happened just to for price to come and test this queue. So, by reason of the inability of price to break this last eye that was created, we should be expecting that price is going to come down. So, let's go to H4. Let me see if you can see that smart money play. Yeah, okay. So, look at it. I low, I low, I. Okay, I, sorry, I, low, I, because this H4, we can use this as a I, low. Let me see, price closed below. Price closed above. You've got to shine your high where price closed above here, came back to break structure, but still closed above here too. Price closed above here because it is switched this to a line chart. Price closed above here, broke structure to the downside, and then gave a retest to this last. And this last can, yeah, price played fifty percent of this last time, and then let's say you enter the your TT should be here, and of course see what price did. price rally down took out this guy, and then what has been happening since then. What has been up? Where are we? 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 Okay, so price came down to give um a proper retest. So this becomes our I go. So where is the soon? Let's just follow. I go I. Being close above here. What happened here? This happens to be this swing, and then this happens to be the last structural point. On this time frame, the price moved structurally, structurally, broke out of this zone, came back to retest. So this becomes the new thing. Came back to retest this cube, gave another break of structure to the upside, making this zone invalid. Price broke structure to the upside, giving us a new range. Yeah, price came down, gave a retest, broke structure, gave a retest well down to 78.6, broke structure again, and making this zone invalid. And then giving us yeah as our new swing and then price came back to 78.6 coinciding 
this institutional candle. This is an institutional candle, TM candle, and of course, price came to almost the 50 percent. Didn't touch the 50 percent, but almost. And then, high low, high low, broke structure here, making this place invalid. As far as this time frame is concerned, this is an internal price pushed up the upside broke out of this last making this our new swing the price came down then give a proper retest down to the and broke out of this zone again so this becomes our new structure so high, low, high. The break of structure happened here. Why price took out this last structural point? And then we saw that price came back into this breaker block, giving us here yeah, as our new range. So high, low, high break of structure to the downside. Price broke what structure to the downside. Looking at the break of structure that happened here, a wise smart money trader will just go straight to the higher time frame to see what actually is happening. Where's the break of Sorry. The break of structure happened. Go to the higher time frame to see what's happening. Okay, so this is what is happening. Price created high, low, came to create another high. You gonna be thinking that price will come back to create as this a new lower low. The reason for this break of structure. So here you will be looking to follow the other flow to the downside. Follow the other flow. Downside, which actually happened, and you can see that after the short retest that happened, price barely gave an under entry. Price came to fill this imbalance and then barely gave another entry. And then we saw the huge move from here down to this place. So, what happened afterward? Low. T structure, I, low, sorry, low, I, low. The yeah. break of structure happened here. So this becomes our new, our last structural point. Price broke structure out of here, came back to a test here. I can see an imbalance here. Came back to a test the imbalance, broke out of here again. Price broke out of this zone again and came down where? To this place. Why? Why? Okay, number one, on field imbalance. Yeah. Number two, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? On field imbalance here, yeah. and then the last bearish candle here. Yeah. I mean, which is understandable, meaning all the moves that happened here, as far as this time frame is concerned. Is seeing all these moves as internal liquidity. The main swing is from here to this place, and then the next swing happens to the here, and then the next swing happens to the here, and then the next swing happens to the here. No matter what time frame you are taking, you have to be cautious and very, very careful that you are not playing the internal liquidity of that. Um, of that uh, time frame 
the higher the time frame, the longer the trade is supposed to take. For example, let's say you found an entry here, maybe on higher time frame. It's going to take days for you to write this lower high back here. But it is, if it is H1, it may not take you more than a day or two to write the swing to the next structural point. But looking at the fact that it's a daily, it is a macro structure for me. Low, high, low, break of structure. I and came to create another low. And then price came here to do what? Let's see. Price didn't break out of here. So we still maintain this place as our last structural point. Even this guy didn't break out of here too. So price came back, came down here. I would have been expecting that price would take out this place. But because this is a higher time frame, price went back up, gave a kind of uh, a coronary test, and then see the huge move that happened. Like, see this move. No chance for the entry at all. B1000 is used to that kind of move. After a kind of consolidation and rigid, you just see, boom, see this, guys, see this move, see this move. See this move, see this move. Like very, very funny kind of move. See this move. That's the character of uh that's the character of the one k So price gave a huge move to the upside, and then what happened? Created low. So I low I broke structure. The price broke structure here. Yeah. And then what happened? We noticed that price gave a bullish price action, took out these liquidities lying helplessly here, came back to this supply candle. And then what happened? Price came down. I, the I, go, I. Based on this, uh, time frame we we can see price coming down to respect this structural formation but i tell you in the long run price is coming to take out high low high maybe go down to this zone to take out these guys and then we see the main move now happens to the outside. Imagine joining this move. Imagine joining this move. Imagine being part of this move. Or imagine being part of this set. That's what it takes to be an institutional trader. And this brings me to the end of the back testing of this asset. Any observation, any question? Any addition, any subtraction, any correction. Waiting. No addition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other person? Good evening. Good evening. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, that sometimes uh on higher time frame, 
like daily, they will still be like continuation of trend. But when you go to like four hours, instead of it, but probably a village, let's say for example now, a village market, you know, it will be creating higher, higher, higher low. Then when you go to um, four hours, instead of a higher low, you have like a break of structure. Like, what do you do in that instance? Do you like follow the daily or follow the flower? Okay, um, it depends on, thank you very much for that question. It depends on the kind of trader that you are. But based on what we've been teaching you guys for a while now, we've been saying that your higher time frame, your buyers should follow what your higher time frame is telling you. So, for example, if my higher time frame just formed a new lower high, Let's say higher time frame is bullish and it's just from a new lower high. I should be looking for sales on the lower time frame because price should give me another lower low before another lower high is created. So in this case, every of my buyers, even on the lower time frame, would be to look out for sell formations. Any buy formation you see is going to be a short move. It's just a retracement. Do you understand? So your higher time frame buyers should be what you are going to be looking for when you go to your lower time frames. I don't know if that answers your question. So, for example, if you have a string, if you have a bearish string on the higher time frame, that bearish string and the higher time frame will be a combination of lower highs and lower lows in your lower time frames. So if you have a bearish screen, if you have if you if you are seeing a bearish move on your lower time frame and you are going to take the um buy setups on lower time frames, you may get clapped easily because the order flow in the higher time frame is bearish. That's why we always say that always follow the order flow of the higher time frame. It will keep your mind at rest and you won't be getting clamped anyhow because the other flow will always follow what the daily is saying. Anything anti what the daily or your higher time frame is saying is just a short retest. They move to the direction of what your higher time frame is. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, thank you very much. Any other before? Okay, in the absence of no other question, I will be ending this class and I want to thank you guys for joining tonight. Tomorrow again, we move. I think tomorrow we are looking at C300. So do well to join. Invite your friends, invite your loved ones. If you are free, we will watch the videos over and over again. Create time for chats, and um, they will never, never regret it. I, I assure you, never, never regret it. It gives you that boldness whenever you want to place your own trade. What you are doing here is short, it's too small. You have to go back and back test and see for yourself. You are not the one doing the back testing, man. You are just observing and seeing what I'm doing. And you have to go back now to now begin to see what we have seen here. Now go back to your own process and you begin to do your back testing and see how price has been moving over the months or over the years. Thank you once again, guys, for joining. Wishing you a blessed and a super amazing night rest. Cheers. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.